going to complain about uh, Martha Spiegelman inviting me to this event because she said, would I come? I said, well, glad to introduce Robbie. She didn't tell me I was going to have to follow Tom Nielsen, which I think is uh, really a difficult try. That was wonderful music. I am really happy to introduce Robbie. Uh, as most of you know, he's the younger son of Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, who in 1953, when Robbie was six, his parents were executed by the United States government for a crime they did not commit, conspiring to steal the atomic bomb secret. For 30 years, Robbie has been a progressive activist, author, and public speaker. In the 1970s, he and his brother Michael sued under the Freedom of Information Act for CIA and FBI records, and which resulted in the release of about 300,000 documents from the United States government about his parents and their case. The government is still withholding about another 100 or 150,000 more because somehow that still is protected with national security. I work here. Uh, Robbie graduated uh, the University of Michigan, uh, received a graduate degree from uh, the University of Michigan as well, he went to law school, and is now, as we like to say, a recovering lawyer. <laughs> In 1990, after leaving private practice, Robbie founded the Rosenberg Fund for Children. He's been the executive director, obviously, since its founding. The RFC is in the midst of the 20th year celebration, the 20th anniversary, with a series of 20-year anniversary events around the country. The RFC, for those who you are not familiar with it, provides for the educational and emotional needs of both targeted activist youth and children whose parents have been harassed, injured, jailed, or lost their jobs or died as a result of or in the course of their progressive activities. In its two decades, the Rosenberg Fund for Children has awarded almost four million dollars in grants for the benefit of hundreds of children. Robert's memoir, An Execution in the Family, over there on the uh, table, was published on the 50th anniversary of his parents' execution. The book details his odyssey as the Rosenberg son through his growth as a political activist, now, of course, as the leader of the Rosenberg Fund for Children. Uh, Robbie, when it comes to raising money for the RFC, and I, as its treasurer, and now duly inspired because I saw the president of the board, Bob Winston, here, are shameless about promoting the book. <laughs> Any of you who have not read it, ten dollars, it is such a bargain, and you get an inscription, and you'll feel good, and will feel good, and really, you should, you should read it, you should own it, it would be a good thing to do. Uh, you'll, when you read the book, after you buy it, uh, you will find out that Robbie is incredibly articulate as a writer, as well as as a speaker, he pays attention, literally, I think, to every word, which was, I have to say, uh, I wasn't doing Martha Spiegelman was introducing her, making her first introductory remarks, uh, and I was reading over the, these words, and I heard her say something about Arkansas, and someone was serving their last day, and you can only serve six years, and I thought was, what an incredibly progressive penal system. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's idea for the Rosenberg Fund for Children really came, uh, its genesis was the Lavasser trial, where I was one of the defense attorneys over 20 years ago. And the, La the Lavasser trial involved a conspiracy charge, uh, a conspiracy to engage in sedition, to overthrow the United States government by force or violence. And one of the motions that was brought in that case had to do with the children of the defendants and how they were kept incommunicado from all friends and family and interrogated by the FBI for weeks after their parents' arrest. And we thought that as a result of that, there should be some remedy. Well, the judge didn't agree, not surprisingly. The government didn't, didn't agree, not surprisingly. But Ravi was inspired to say that those children and children like them, who have been targeted, should not go through what he went through and his brother went through, that it's wrong, and he was going to do something to make sure that didn't happen. And he did, and he's been enormously successful at it. I was thinking today about what has made Robbie so successful. 
as the leader of this organization and how he has inspired so many people with his life's work. And I came up with a list of what I think are those qualities that Robbie exhibits. And they are passion, commitment, intelligence, analysis, courage, leadership, empathy, understanding, endurance, and vision. And one other really extraordinary thing that is part of his life, which is his life partner, Ellie Mirapol. My pleasure to introduce Rob. <laughs>